What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we've got some new news out of Reuters, an exclusive report um, saying that Tesla is potentially partnering with CATL to bring cobalt-free batteries to market for its Made in China Model 3 and potentially other vehicles. Um, this lines up with a bunch of other interesting Tesla CATL rumors. So another episode of nerding out on Tesla's battery supply chain and figuring out what is going on with their future battery technology roadmap. Um, so to, to, before um, we get into what, what came out yesterday and today, I want to take a step back to November 2019 when Bloomberg put out this uh, interesting report saying that Tesla was planning to partner with CATL um, longer term to build batteries uh, for the Made in China Model 3 or for uh, cars coming out of the Shanghai Gigafactory. Um, they said that in August of 2019, Elon Musk actually had gone to Shanghai, met with the chairman of CATL for a 40-minute meeting, closed this preliminary deal, which was expected to pick up sometime in mid-2020. Um, and basically, the rumor was that CATL would basically replace Pana, what, or do what Panasonic is doing at the Gigafactory, building or helping Tesla build these battery cells, but doing that in China. So now, today, we've gotten this very new, crazy news, or yesterday, coming from uh, Reuters, saying that Tesla's in talks to use CATL's cobalt-free batteries in China-made cars. So there's a few layers to this. Um, the biggest piece of this, this news to drop is that um, they would not be using lithium ion cells. Um, adoption marked the first time for the US automaker to include so-called lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries in its lineup as it seeks to lower production costs amid faltering overall EV sales in China. Tesla's been talking to the Chinese manufacturer for more than a year to supply LFP batteries that will be cheaper than its existing batteries by a double digit percentage, said a person directly involved in the matter who is not authorized to speak with the media and so uh, declined to be identified. Um, so this is really interesting. Basically, they're saying this inside source at Tesla is leaking this news, um, and this would be a huge, probably the biggest structural change in Tesla's batteries ever because they're going to go from lithium ion cells to lithium uh, iron phosphate, which is a different technology but is already very pervasive in China that CATL builds. Um, it's not as energy dense as the Tesla as the technology of lithium ion cells that Tesla uses for its U.S. made Model 3s. So that's why a lot of people have been like thinking about like. This would never happen. Tesla would never use this technology. So for them to be uh, Reuters saying that they're going to use it is really, really interesting. And part of this, layering this in, um, there's an excellent article about um, this that was put out by Clean Technica by my friend Kanan, who I actually just talked to earlier this morning. So shout out to him. Um, but he put out an amazing article about this, um, talking about the energy density um, has been slowly improving uh, for companies like CATL, but it's only around 160 watt hours per kilogram relative to the 2170 cells made by Panasonic that Tesla uses for the Model 3 and Model Y in the US, around 247 watt hours per kilogram. So far less energy dense, but then there is this very interesting new layer to the technology, CATL's, or CATL's cell to pack technology, um, essentially removing the modules and just having cells in the battery pack could make it significantly more efficient. So this is something that Elon Musk actually talked about on the third row podcast that I was on about a month ago. Shout out to the third row. I'll play those clips. Like the original reason why the rows to battery pack had, like, I think it was like 16 sort of blades was if was what modules if if one of them didn't work you could pull it out and put another one in because <laughs> that, that happened um then we then yeah so we, you don't really need modules in my view you should just go from cells to pack at this point but um yeah, it was a very difficult thing going from Rosa to Model S. The fact that like the Model 3 still has modules is kind of vestigial. It's vestigial, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it, because it, the, the modules in the Model 3 are not actually interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in having modules, really. You just have a, you should, you should just have a pack. Um, was that done to just save cost then or, or some other reason? It, it started off because... <laughs> It's it's not it's not a sensible reason. Um, <laughs> the, the the reason that there were uh, cells, modules, and pack goes back to the early roadster days, where we'd make a module. That module would have uh, problems, and so then you could swap out a module. It's like a, like a server rack. The idea was like you know, if you have a bunch of servers in, in a server room and one of the servers flakes out, you can just pull it out and put another one in. So without having to replace, so so you could replace. A small fraction of the pack instead of the whole pack. Okay. Um, then, but then that concept just carried forward into Model S, X, and three, oh. but without the, but the the original logic no longer exists because the modules are not interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just swap out a module. Um, uh, so, but, but these things just have a lot of inertia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we really want to move to no such thing as a module. There's just cells and pack. 
So you can see that Elon Musk is basically hinting and saying that they the modules are unnecessary, they want to remove them, they want to go directly with cells into packs, which is very interesting because it directly lines up with this techno technology that CATL has been touting, and now we see that Tesla and CATL are working together on this new pack. So my interpretation is this new pack, Tesla's got around using this less energy dense lithium ion phosphate by removing the modules and therefore getting more overall energy density into the pack. Now another layer to this um, that Kanan uh, brought up in his article is the 100 kilowatt hour Tesla Model 3. And so there was a bunch of rumors with this guy called Green, at Green the Only, who's sort of like a Tesla hacker Twitter account. Um, and he basically said, looking into the source code, um, the, where it gets interesting is the battery packs. The 100 kilowatt pack has survived the great non-Model 3 stuff purge mid-year. So there's a fair chance that it's actually upcoming and not some spillover. So this is another interesting tidbit of everyone's like, wait, the Model 3 up until now, like a 75 hour, 75 kilowatt hour pack, why would they need to go to 100? That would be like a 500 mile range car. Could Tesla even fit that many batteries in the in this pack? Nobody knew it was happening, but now, this is just my conspiracy theory, this could be lining up with this new CATL technology where it's a bigger pack, 100 kilowatt hours, because uh, they're cramming more batteries, but without the modules, it's still around the same size. It's a little le less energy dense, but it will be good enough for at least the standard range plus version um, of the car built in China. And now, so, Really interesting stuff going on. And another layer to this is the lack of cobalt. So this is something that Reuters says um, that they, they want to stop making this an entirely cobalt-free battery. Cobalt um, is one of the most expensive minerals and, and part of the battery supply chain. But even more than the price sensitivity to cobalt is the um, you know just exposure to the P negative PR about cobalt and the uh, bad things going on at the supply chain. It's called like a conflict material, conflict metal, because the places where they mine it, they might be using underage labor. There's not much regulation. Um, they could be exploiting workers. And so the, everybody's trying to cut out cobalt of the supply chain. Tesla's been leading in that. And actually, in another article to tie into this, I'm going to link all these below. Uh, Tesmanian has an article um, that came out yesterday about um, these no cobalt batteries. And they added some really interesting stuff, um, throwing this 2018 tweet about how someone was calling out Tesla for using too much cobalt. And Elon Musk said, we use less than 3% cobalt in our batteries and we use none in our next gen. Another hint that potentially this is all lining up and coming together. No cobalt, Elon Musk confirming it, CATL saying no cobalt. And then we even have this really interesting slide from Benchmark Mineral Intelligence um, showing the cobalt reduction over time. As you can see, cobalt down 36% to the Model S and X, um, you know, second version battery pack, uh, and then down 29% even further when you have the new 2170 cells for the 2018 Model 3. So Tesla making actively pushing to reduce the um, amount of cobalt in their batteries, and it sounds like zero cobalt is sort of the logical next step. So that's another thing tying into this. And the last layer of this whole battery puzzle piece of news is... Um, a tweet from Benchmark Minerals' Simon Moores, and Benchmark is like an independent uh, research agency specializing in battery supply chains, pretty well respected, but I don't know where they're getting this info, but he says, Tesla will use prismatic battery cells for the first time in the Model 3 short range for Chinese consumers. They will be made using CATL LFP cells tailor-made for Model 3. It's the first time Tesla have expanded from cylindrical cells 18650 or 2170. So, that is the news dump. I just laid everything on you. Uh, now I'm going to try and summarize it. But basically, we have um, rumors heating up about from a leaked source, apparently inside Tesla, telling Reuters. And that, just to caveat this, like this is not official Tesla news. Tesla has not confirmed this. Um, and Tesla, you know, there's been times in the past where Reuters has been leaking stuff and it's just been false. And so um, it's important to keep that in mind. But it looks like someone from inside Tesla has been leaking to Reuters saying, we're about to sign this deal with CATL, use these new cobalt-free batteries. It's not a lithium ion cell. It's a lithium phosphate, lithium iron phosphate type of battery that is currently super widely used in China, but it's just much shorter range, less energy dense. So nobody thought Tesla would ever use it, but now they are using it because of this breakthrough of cell to pack technology, lining up with what Elon said, no modules. This new cell chemistry also happens to have no cobalt. It also happens to, re re uh, and pricing wise, I think is a, another huge layer to all this where they say it could be a double digit percent price decrease for the battery pack um, and all of this is going to you know all this new technology this new battery pack basically cheaper a little bit older technology but with the new cell to pack with no cobalt is going to be in the uh, made in china model 3 um, and that is what they're going to use for for those local like like Tesla keeps talking about how they want to get all these local supply suppliers for the Model 3. That's when margins will really hit their stride. So now it seems like until this point, they've been importing battery packs from Panasonic in Nevada and using LG Chem to supply the battery packs for Gigafactory Shanghai. But the long-term real sort of steady state plan here is to partner with CATL um, and use this lithium iron phosphate technology. So my thoughts at a high level here are, wow, I was totally not expecting this, totally out of left field. Um, 
to, to see Tesla use this totally different type of battery technology um, is very surprising. But then when you dive into, okay, they didn't actually need more range, they didn't need to make it more dense, um, and the, the, the cost reduction, it actually makes a lot of sense for at least the cheaper Model 3 for now. And the other big layer to this is I think a geopolitical layer to some degree, which is CATL is a Chinese company relative to Panasonic and uh, LG Chem, which are not. And so I think you know Tesla's been getting this royal treatment in China, building their gigafactory from the ground up in less than a year, getting all these amazing incentives. Um, the government just you know is providing really cheap financing for the factory, seems to be very on board with Tesla in China. And I think sort of a quid pro quo like, trade-off for that could be, you know, Tesla has is, is using Chinese suppliers to build the batteries, and that helps the Chinese economy, that helps them perfect the electric vehicle technology, which is something that China really wants to get down. China's becoming a bigger and bigger importer of foreign oil. I think this is something that they want to get rid of as soon as possible, um, and instead of investing in, like, their own oil or the internal combustion engine, they are clearly seeing the future as the electric vehicle platform and EVs. Um, so China is going all in and wants to get really good at building electric vehicles. So by letting Tesla in, they're accelerating their own green movement and then they're hel helping their main battery company, CATL, with this mega supply deal that's not only going to give them a huge amount of revenue and be tied in with Tesla, you know, that's an amazing business opportunity, but it's going to give CAT CATL expertise in building these next generation battery cells, um, which could be used for other uh, long range EV companies in China in the long run. Another layer on top of all this is you might be like, wait, so Tesla's right now is at 247, 250 watt hours per kilogram for the Model 3 energy density packs. Now they're going to go to this technology that's around 200 for CATL because it's cheaper. So they're going backwards in energy density. But what about Maxwell, which is at 300 watt hours per kilogram, potentially scaling to 500? Why is Tesla using this retro technology if they also have Maxwell? Well, way out of my depth on this, but could Maxwell's technology be used to manufacture not just lithium ion cells, but also lithium iron phosphate cells potentially? So maybe it doesn't mean they're not using Maxwell. Maybe that dry battery electrode is still part of this new prismatic cell, which is a whole nother crazy thing that we, we, we that you could I could spend a whole episode on. But um, so now I'm thinking like, at a high level, Tesla, what I originally thought was kind of the simplified version of like, oh, they're at the 18650 cell, then they're gonna come out the 2170 cell, then they're gonna come out the Maxwell cell, like keep making their cells better, everything else is obsolete. That's not what happened. It's a far more complicated, fragmented battery supply chain and overall picture. You know, the biggest reason that actually a ton of other automakers, I think Mercedes, EQC, Jaguar I-Pace, um, they're all like, oh my God, we can't build enough EVs because we don't have enough batteries. Battery supply, and this is something Elon Musk talked about on the conference calls, Tesla's biggest constraint on growth. And so to get over this, they literally need batteries from every single person possible. And so that's why I think they're gonna, they've are gonna they still continued to buy batteries in, uh, that are being built in Japan from Panasonic for the Model S and X, built a whole battery factory in Nevada to build the 2170 cells for the Model 3 and Y. I think they're all gonna keep that going. Then they're gonna partner with CATL to this lithium iron phosphate cell in China. They're gonna keep that going. Let's assume none of this uses Maxwell. They're also gonna start building their own battery, next generation, super dense, super um, probably super expensive relative to everything else, super low volume, but then Tesla's totally next generation technology. But the point is they need all of these different battery supplies at once to meet the demand for their products. And so I think that is, as things come into focus and we get closer to Battery Investor Day, that is how my understanding of how this is all unfolding. And I think Maxwell, in my personal view, is moving from something that is about to be commercialized to something that's maybe a little bit further down the road, or maybe they're using it with C CATL and that's helping them achieve new densities for lithium iron phosphate, which makes that practical. So I don't know. My point is ton of interesting news. I'm going to link to it below. I need your help. Let me know what you think. What is going on here? I think this is a fascinating evolution. Um, something I totally wasn't expecting, but has got me super pumped and just thinking about like prismatic cells, lithium iron phosphate. Okay. Epic. Um, Pandora's box is kind of starting to be opened here. Um, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Huge shout out to our Patreon producers, supporters, fun in the channel. See you guys next time.